Katie Dillon of LaHoyaMom.com and I'm sitting here on this beautiful sunny day in La Jolla with Ray Wetterlin III and we're here to talk about pre and postnatal fitness. So Ray, if somebody is looking to start a prenatal workout, what would you suggest? Well, the first thing that, that I would suggest is uh, to engage in an exercise program ideally beforehand. Mm -hmm. You know, I encourage people to always exercise, um, but at least six weeks before pregnancy is going to be the best thing. And then to engage in a not rigorous, but a, a, a nice, um, good controlled mm -hmm. exercise program with proper stretching and strength training and cardiovascular exercise all the way throughout pregnancy um, up to term. And are there any exercises that are off limits once you get pregnant? You know, it's it's not like right away, like boom, you know, I'm, I'm pregnant, okay, I uh -huh. can't do this exercise. Um, as, as pregnancy actually progresses, mm -hmm. then there's definitely certain things that are contraindicated from trimester mm -hmm. to, you know, trimester. One exercise that you want to completely avoid altogether, which is, is pretty obvious, is lying in a prone position where you're actually lying on your stomach. We're doing any exercise where it's actually, you know, troubling and, you know, crowding the abdomen region. Um, you want to avoid that altogether. And then it's heavily suggested and recommended to avoid exercises where you're lying on your back in a supine position hmm. after the fourth month or you don't want to lie there for for that long. So in terms of bridges, that. so in terms of bridges and things like that, mm -hmm. that's where you would want to be elevated and get your head up okay. above your heart and so forth um, using benches and you know balls and things like that with support with stability. Okay. And um, you know in in terms of exercise it, itself Temperature really doesn't become much of an issue um, for pregnant women exercising. You know, if the temperature exceeds roughly, I think it's 102.6 degrees, then that's something that needs to be avoided. Sure. Um, that would be a definite concern. Dehydration, got to drink a lot of water, at least a quart and a half of water, you know, not all at once or anything like that. Um, and, you know, it's baby steps, mm -hmm. right? You yeah, know? no, so I it's, do. it's not progressive. It's not a time to be progressive, but it's taking care of yourself as as well as as your baby, soon to be baby, and uh, you know having a, a smooth and a healthy pregnancy all the way throughout. And uh, one of the other things, is, as far as exercise goes, and and a sign that you want to be very aware of, two things actually, is. Once you get done with doing your exercise, whatever it is, you know, later in pregnancy, it's common that, that the baby would, would be kicking and moving mm -hmm. roughly, you know, two to four times within a 30 minute time I period. know. <laughs> if I'm that familiar. does not happen, then that can be a sign of overtraining and also, oh, the, really? and also the baby can be tired. So if, if that happens by, by any means, then that's where you would want to, you know, talk to your doctor. Interesting. I didn't know that either. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that's good to know, actually. It's a good rule of thumb. Yeah. Are there any exercises that pregnant women can do that can help speed up the delivery process or just make it easier in general? I love this question, and without a doubt, I would say that there's three critical essential exercises um, that pregnant women should be doing throughout pregnancy mm -hmm. and engaging in, if anything. I, you know, I encourage exercise all the way up to term. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be ideal in, in a healthy pregnant woman and um, the first exercise that's most essential is actually your kegel exercises right. you know very mm -hmm. common very common exercise and um, and then the second one is going to be abdominal pulses okay. and, and so forth and then the last one is going to be doing pelvic tilt bridge exercises so you're going to strengthen through your hips and and also help strengthen your lower back muscles as well and tell me a little bit more about the abdominal the lower it's lower abdominals right yeah and yeah. so that's safe to do while you're pregnant or would you need to do that as a prevent preventative exercise or you know while pregnancy it, it definitely varies in terms of you do want to strengthen your abdominal mm -hmm. muscles and in, in doing plank holds and, and different type of stabilization mm -hmm. exercises and then you modify them um, depending on the trimester and depending mm -hmm. on the individual their fitness level their comfort mm -hmm. and and so forth but also doing abdominal pulses and, and things like that is it mimics the actual delivery process. Okay. And in terms of engaging those core muscles, um, which are most critical for, for delivering a baby. Mm -hmm. And I think that would have helped me because I had a cesarean, it would have probably helped me speed up 
the healing process, you know, because I felt like my muscles here were just totally disjointed after the fact. So I wish I would have known that. Yeah, it definitely, you do those exercises, that's gonna help mm -hmm. speed up the, re the recovery time without a doubt, but you gotta make sure that you exercise mm -hmm. up to term if you want the benefits mm -hmm. of having a, a faster delivery date by roughly mm -hmm. five to seven days. And then a lot of women have trouble with swelling in their legs, knees, and feet, especially in the last trimester. Is there anything that if we feel like that swelling coming on that we can do, or is it more of a preventative measure that we need to take to kind of prevent see, that love, from happening. See, I love this question and, and because of just how, you know, wonderful it is and bringing in these gifts into life mm -hmm. and, and so forth that, you know, it's all, it's all a natural process mm -hmm. and, and a way of life. That is, that's a normal um, sensation. It's a normal experience. But yeah, absolutely. There's definitely mm -hmm. things that you can be doing, you know, and you want to make sure that you're not sitting down for an extended amount sure. of time because then you're going to lock up anyways through your hips and so forth. So you want to engage and at least walk around if you have a, a desk job and mm -hmm. so forth. One of the other things that you can do is you can put, you can elevate your foot up mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, that's also going to help in terms of opening up circulation and the other thing that you can engage in conjunction with regular traditional strength training exercises you can actually do aquatic exercises and that will also help alleviate the the swelling and those right. sensations in the feet now that brings me to my next question which is about cravings because when I was pregnant I would crave different things at different times and so one day it might be fruit, like oranges, and one day it might be muffins. Well, they were from Starbucks, but at the time. Or cheese. I craved a lot of cheese, and I'm wondering if that's a protein thing. So I always thought that my body was trying to tell me something. And so should we listen to those cravings, or should we just try to stick to more of a regimented diet? Love the question. You know, I don't like to think of it as diet. I like to think of it as proper nutrition. Mm -hmm. And you know, some of those cravings and, and things like that, um, you know, are, are good to recognize, but not in all instances, mm -hmm. you know, and that varies from woman to woman and even hormonally mm -hmm. um, with all the changes and, and things sure. that are taking place. But even if you're craving cheese and, and dairy products and stuff like that, because a lot of time women are deficient in calcium and they're not getting enough calcium or they're not taking their prenatals and, and so mm -hmm. forth and stuff like that. And that's why women are getting so many cramps and, you know, like in their calves and, and they, they can't explain it because they're deficient in calcium oh, okay. more, more than not. And so, you know, by consuming dairy and calcium type products, um, you know, that'll really help that a lot. Just stay away from the junk. Just, I mean, <laughs> you know, I like to, I like to I mean, say at least, you know, I like to, in that I like case, you know, 80% of, you know, of the time, try to be regimented and, you know, 20% of the time, um, you know, to even 10% of the time is where you could kind of indulge a little bit, but that's not the time where you're trying to lose weight during pregnancy. <laughs> you know, it's, so a true. it's a natural part of life that, you know, women are gaining 25 to 35 pounds. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but I do think one of the oftentimes mistake is women think, hey, I'm eating for two. You know, I can I just know. get after it. I um, know. You know, even though that women's metabolisms actually speed up during pregnancy sure. and foster, which it's it's so incredible, and with the placenta and, and carrying on, you know, breathing and you know, providing oxygen and nutrients to the fetus, and so it's it's really a incredible thing. It's good to hear. Good to hear. I like that. 80, 80, 20. That's like a because Pareto that's, that's principle, real. right? That's real. Yeah. It's real. Yep. It's real because if you said it said zero, then so many people would fall off the wagon. Well, see, and that's the thing. I'm a Including realist. Me. Well, I'm a realist. So, mm -hmm. you know, compliance and adherence is going to be the most important thing. So, you know, if, if you have some crazy diet or something like that, you know, people aren't going to follow it. Mm -hmm. And the most, one of the most critical things is we're trying to reduce stress mm -hmm. and relax and calm pregnant women. And you know, we're not trying to add on even more stressors sure. than day-to-day -day stress in its own. I know, I hear you. Well, thanks, Ray. I appreciate you talking to me today about this very important subject. Thank you so much for having me.